All right, guys, welcome back. We are going to look at solving sides and angles using sine and cosine. So just a way of reminder, remember that you do need to switch your calculator into degree mode. If you're using Desmos, hit the little tool button in the top right corner. Make sure the degree mode is the one that is highlighted. Um, and then if you're on a calculator like a TI-84, you're going to want to take a look at the top middle where it says mode. Hit that, switch to degree mode. All right, let's also review sine and cosine. Remember, we have so katoa. So means sine is opposite over hypotenuse, S-O-H. And remember, it's always opposite the angle we're talking about. So here's my opposite side, and then here's my hypotenuse. Okay, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and we did tangent previously, which is opposite over adjacent. All right, so let's go ahead and solve some of these. Now, unlike the tangent, we're actually going to have to choose uh, which, which uh, ratio we're going to use. So let's start by labeling our sides, and then from our sides, we're going to be able to tell, do I want to use sine or cosine? So first thing here, we're going to find our hypotenuse. So I find that here at 33, it's opposite my 90. I look at my angle, I go opposite my angle. That's going to be my O side, and that's my A side. So now, remember Sokotoa, okay? So I've got so, ka, Tell all right? All right, so when I'm doing this, look at which, uh, which letters I have something next to. So I've got something here with my H, I've got a 33, and I've got something here with my O's, my X. Now, some people um, get confused and they like to do the A with the, the degree sign or something like that. You're not allowed to do that, okay? It has to be outside the triangle. So what do I have outside the triangle? What sides do I have in play? I've got an O side and an H side in play. That tells me, O and H tells me I'm going to use sine because that's O over H. If I had A and H, it would be cosine. If I had O and A, it would be tangent. So let's go ahead and set this thing up. Sine of 49. This is going to be just like before. We're just using sine. Sorry, let me uh, fix that. Sine of 49. So it's just like before. And then O over H. Okay. Instead of using tangent like we did previously, we're just going to use sine. We're going to set up the ratio as we need to. Okay. We multiply both sides by 33. So I know 33 sine 49, remember we keep those separate, is equal to x. Let's go ahead and go to our calculator and see if this kind of makes some sense. So 33 sine 49, I get 24.9 as an answer. So let's go back and take a look. 24.9, is that a reasonable answer for this problem? Um, yeah, it's got to be less than 33, right? 33 is my hypotenuse. If I set this up wrong, I could get a number bigger than 33, but I know hypotenuse is always the biggest side, so that seems reasonable, 24.9. All right, let's look at this next one. Once again, we're going to start by labeling our sides. H, this is my O side. It's opposite my angle here, and that's my A. Now notice what I have this time. I've got something with my A. I've got something with my H. That's A and H. That's cosine. So if we set this up, it's going to be cosine of 58 is equal to 26 over X. All right, let's solve this thing out for X. We're going to multiply both sides by X. So I've got x cosine 58 is equal to 26. I'm going to divide both sides by cosine 58. My O is getting in the way there. All right, so I end up with these guys canceling out. So I've got x is equal to 26 all over cosine of 58. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug that into my calculator and see what I've got. So cosine, I'm sorry, uh, I just forgot what I was supposed to plug in here. Uh, 26, 26 over cosine of 58. Uh, and I get 49.06, uh, we'll again round that to the nearest tenth, so that'll be 49.1. And again, use your hypotenuse as a guide if this answer makes sense or not. Uh, 49.1, it should be bigger than 26, and from the picture it should be um, you know, close to double that, and so that seems to make sense here. All right, last problem. 
Okay, once again, we're going to do O, H, and A. So that's my O side and that's my H side. And again, O is opposite the angle. That's my A. I've got A and H. That's another cosine. So I'm going to set this up. Cosine of my angle is equal to 14 over 21. All right, and like before, we're going to do the inverse cosine on both sides. So cosine to the negative 1, 14 over 21. If you try to use regular cosine on this, it's not going to work. So you have to go second cosine on your calculator or on Desmos. What we're going to do, pull up Desmos, what we'll do is we're going to go into our functions. So we hit our little keyboard, go to functions, cosine inverse, 14 over 21. And I got 48.18 or 48.2. All right. And so does that make sense for this angle, 48.2 degrees? Uh, it's maybe a little bit large for, or a little bit small for the, what that angle looks like. But it's, you know, generally reasonable. If you got like two that were 0 0.107 those wouldn't make any sense or if you got something over 90 that wouldn't make sense either so do kind of check your your answer with the angles is a little harder to be more specific about what they should turn out to be all right so that's sine and cosine there's one last thing i do want to talk about here okay let's back this up here we've got o h and a right and if we were talking about cosine of x we know that's equal to the O side, or the A side, 14 over 21. But I want to show you something else here. What if we talked about the other angle? What if we talked about this angle right here? Actually, let me switch it this way. Talked about angle Y there. Okay, what would be the O and A side? So this is still H, right? This is now my O side. That's still my A side. Well, notice that if I take sine of y, what do I get? I get 14 over 21. I actually find out that cosine of one angle in the triangle is the same as sine of the other angle in a right triangle, which is actually kind of interesting. And what that means is we actually know that x and y have a relationship, right? Um, x and y have to add up to 90, because I've got 90 degrees here in my triangle, so whatever x is, I could actually think about this instead of y, I could think of this as 90 minus x. So what I find out is sine and cosine, um, if you take the complementary angle of whatever cosine is, that's the same as the sine. So if I have, so let me show you what I mean. If I have cosine of 30 degrees, that's gonna be equal to sine of 60 degrees, or you could do 15, and 75 or anything like that. So the complementary angles for cosine and sine are actually equal to each other. There's a reason for that, and we'll get into that reason more. I mean, you can see it here. We're going to get into that reason more uh, when we get into trigonometry. So anyways, this wraps up our lesson on solving sides and angles with sine and cosine.